So here is my, let me log into it. So my system controller or my, uh, is the font big enough or I can increase the font? Um, So the system controller is at 10, 10, 10 3. Everything is virtualized. So we have a virtual system controller and a virtual subcloud. The subcloud is a simplex. Uh, system controller is by definition, has to be a duplex. I have only one of them running right now, mainly because the system that I have doesn't have enough uh, resources to run that. It's a 10 year old laptop. Um, which basically says that on an, an any recent build server, you should be able to have a complete duplex running as well as a simplex to play with the um, distributed cloud. So we log in onto the distributed, uh, under the system controller. And as a first thing always, we do a system host list and it comes back, the degraded here basically says that uh, it's because one of the controllers is down. But uh, from a system controller perspective, we have to have two because it has to be HA. There has to be redundancy. Um, the way we access the, the, uh, the subcloud, or we can display the subcloud, is with subcloud list, DC subcloud list. And what you notice here is that it's online and it is in sync, right? And if we now go to the subcontroller, a uh, subcloud, this subcloud is available and it is unlocked, right? Now we want to see, and I hope that I set up the tunnel correctly right now. Put that again. I cannot get to it. I can unfortunately not show the um, GUI version of it, but we can walk through what, what needs to be done. So a couple of things I want to emphasize, put the emphasis on. Um, okay. Um, okay. So starting point. Uh, Starling X, as, is, as we all know by now, is an integrated system. It's a fully integrated system, meaning that the Linux kernel, open source software, root file system, along, along with Starling X components, as well as the uh, Kubernetes portion of it, have all been integrated into a single image, into a single ISO image that you get to uh, use to install uh, the first controller. Uh, Documentation of that, where to start, uh, the documentation build guide, it's a very good build guide. Uh, I mentioned that, um, yeah, I have that here. Uh, the build guide basically goes through the build, you use the same uh, and requires you to download and use the uh, Starling X tools project. 
the Starling X Tools project gives you a number of uh, features. One of them is the Starling X Build Tools, which gives you a consistent, um, a consistent software development environment for a specific version of uh, the tools. Uh, the advantage of that is you always link, you always have the right tools. You're building the Starling X from the, using the correct tools that everyone else is using. Uh, it also has a deployment examples and deployment tools uh, that, we, that I am using here. Uh, the deployment tools give you by default a duplex or a simplex model. Uh, you can extend those uh, with um, Work, uh, which you can extend with worker nodes, storage nodes, or as in this case, with uh, 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 in a dis uh, we are extending that with a distributed cloud. Basically, what we do is, um, and here's the <clears throat> yeah, uh, I, I referred to this earlier today. So. Uh, What the Starling X tools gives you on the right is the central controller that comes with the uh, um, that comes with uh, from the tools. We are not adding any modifications to that. Uh, to the left, we have the sub clouds. Again, comes it's a simplex. Again, comes it comes by default as is from the tools. Uh, no no modifications needed. The plumbing in between is to turn this to, to connect this to via a gateway. I'm sure that there might be another better way than what I have done here. Please let me know. Um, but by doing this, we basically put them on two different subnets, routable, and turn one of them into a subcloud for testing, for validation, or just to play with them. And I wish I could get this to work now, but. Yeah. Um, and much of this can be automated. So if we go to uh, step z screen zero, um, from here, I wrote a small script So the readme file in this directory, basically uh, in this project of this, oh, shoot, okay. Thanks. Means I have to turn around here. Okay, so pretty much uh, this step is outlined here, what you need to do to create the VMs. Uh, simply ex uh, you do simply an export, you give the, a bridge name, uh, the name of the bridge, uh, and you set the IP networks for the, uh, that you want your controller or your system cloud to have. Once you have this, which is essentially what we are doing here. So there are two steps in this. So you start off with the export, then you set up the network, and you set up the configuration. Setup configuration is going to uh, run through, and uh, you set up the configuration by giving it the ISO image. In this case, I'm using the default Starling X image, and uh, you basically tell it what you want it to be, a duplex or a simplex. 
we do this twice, and after that, uh, the rest of this script, it will be part of the PowerPoint. Uh, it will be posted, which you can download. Going through the installation, one second. Um, sorry about that. So let's go ahead through the process and create an, a simplex and see about, uh, see the installation and that. Um, And you can ignore this comment. So let me... So when you first boot it, when you first put in the ISO image, there are three options that you have. Standard controller, all-in-one controller, as well as all-in-one low latency controller configuration. Uh, console, by default, we choose a serial port because that e makes it obviously easier. Um, as we push this, it's going to go through the, um, it boots it up and it does the installation by itself uh, automatically. It doesn't ask any questions. And that is mainly because uh, in, a, in an environment where, in an IT environment, you want to make sure that once it is installed, it is fully automated. And this screen, you can move Control B, and uh, it's going to take a couple minutes, a couple seconds, and it's going to uh, create a partition for uh, on the system. So the first time we install uh, Starling X, it's going to create a partition that will not be touched on any subsequent installation. That partition is platform backup. Um, we can use that to uh, store container images, um, the container images that are used by the, you know, during the bootstrap process uh, to speed it up. So we download uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's somewhere between, depending on the uh, system that you're installing, we can download, uh, the download size can be up to a few gigs, which can be uh, difficult in case of low, um, low throughput network. So that's why we have a pre-staging or a platform backup, which is here. Now, once that is installed, and this installation will take a little bit time. Let me see if I can get the... Okay. And there are about 1,200 packages. Let me... Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I cannot show the GUI interface of that, but we, if we, we can go through the script if need be. Would that be okay? Or if you have any questions at this point, we can dive into answering, I can dive into answering questions. Can you show the application again? Maybe we can help you? Why don't you come here? <laughs> uh, pa uh, passport is ST.
the SSH command is here. Which one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what might be that it, it's HTTP. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry, it's... Oh. Yeah, it's okay, I'm working on that one. Well, it does read it. Pardon me? Yeah, but the other portion is not, unfortunately. So, Use yet another laptop. Okay, thanks. Firefox, yeah. Okay, so um, finally we made it. Thanks, uh, Eddie. Um, ST8RLING. That's the default password of uh, Starling X. Um, we saw this uh, graphic of this earlier today. When you log in into the horizon of the system controller, the first thing that you see is, this, is the subcloud, it is this page. If you want to go to the system controller, you basically choose uh, region one, and we see that the, what system is down, what system, uh, the state of each system. We dive into that system, and you know this information probably much better than I do. But what it also does is, from a subcloud perspective, so once we log in onto the subcloud, we can see that the subcloud is ever completely in sync. It is online, but, and that we can dive into the host detail. And the level of information that is shared from the subcloud or that we can extract from the subcloud into the system controller. The amount of memory, storage. So um, we don't have self-configured on this, as well as the ports, where uh, the default system basically, you know, the default weird model that you uh, get from the tools project includes, uh, comes with four uh, ports or four interfaces that uh, 
and two of which are uh, accelerated, as you can see here, uh, VFIO. And two of them are just generic. We allocate one of them to the management. It is possible to also use, uh, get rid of, uh, use only one port for that purpose. I know there is no way for me to go completely over this, uh, simply put, because we don't have the time. But um, are there any questions at this point? Sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, requirement for oh hardware requirement um, the default hardware requirements for uh, Starling X are outlined basically but um, are outlined on the Starling X page it wants you to have a number of this uh, storage uh, devices like a 500 gig for the primary and if you want to use SAF uh, it recommends to have another two uh, NICs, uh, another two SSDs, 200 or 250 gig each, <clears throat> or depending on how much you store. You can, however, install without Ceph, and you can reduce the size of the primary disk. Uh, memory requirement for the um, for each VM is about 18 gig. Um, again, that is something that can be played with. Um, and uh, the interfaces, uh, here the interfaces are uh, virtual, but you can always pass in uh, physical interfaces. You won't have SRIOV, or you will not be able to create SRIOVs, but you are able to pass in um, uh, physical uh, device uh, uh, create a PCI pass-through. That would be one, uh, and you can do the same thing, not only just with NICs, but also with other devices like uh, can GPU, you can pass a GPU as well. Fortunately, my demo doesn't work, which is, uh, yeah. I noticed. Um, yeah, I mean, you are familiar with the horizon. Any questions on this front? Okay. Let me switch back to my own laptop, and I'd like to point out a couple other projects. So one area that I want you to take away with is this page. That is uh, basically the documentation. Um, if we go to the build, It's a pretty good, uh, shoot. I think so. I think that would be a better approach to do that than, um, but, uh, and I will do that. Um, here, basically, uh, the requirement is outlined for the workstation, 32 gig uh, of RAM and 500 gig for disk. That is for the build. So pretty much the same system can be used for uh, running the test or for playing with, uh, with Starling X uh, installation. Um, once the build is completed, it produces a boot image that ISO. Uh, takes a little, a little while for it to complete, but it produces a boot image that ISO that you um, 
that you will need to uh, pass in using the script that I pointed out. And I will post everything on Starling X or via PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, okay. I can unfortunately not complete the demo, but uh, that was one that I wanted to show. Then the other thing that I wanted to show uh, is the download page that is this guy and uh, then Starling X documentation is also pretty good documentation that you can um, outline that outlines pretty much where I get most of my info from And it starts with the installation guides. And we are at starting X6, and these are the different models. Distributed cloud is somewhere down here. Okay, so. Yes, so we will work on, I will work on uh, recording this demo and uh, posting that on StarlingX.io. Thank you. It's all my fault, I know. I will sacrifice beer tonight <laughs> after the meeting. Okay, thank you.